Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. The makers of this wood, frogblanks.com, had asked me to try and create different turned items with their with their wood, and they actually provided this for me. And with Valentine's coming up, I thought, well, I should make something for my wife for Valentine's Day. So I decided to make this little cross grain box, but use the frog planks wood here as a lid. Now what I like about this is when I can use this wood and turn it so that it exposes the grains across it. You've seen it before with other uh, projects. But this time, to, in order to get this effect of this totally unduplicatable uh, topology of the lid, I used the infinite axis chuck that I have not made a video on for quite a while, so I decided to do it. But then I had another problem with the back side of this. Previously I typically finished them flat before I turned it. This time I didn't want to do that because I wanted to hollow it. Uh, so then I said, well, okay, how do I do that? I tried one thing that didn't work. I'll explain that in the video. But then the other thing is to how to make a jam chuck for something very, very flat and without wasting a lot of wood. Well, this one's out of MDF and actually was not thick enough, and so it didn't totally succeed. It needs to be thicker and probably not have something so as nasty as MDF. But for now, well, I'm making this out of uh, the frog blanks wood, and if you check the description below, they're going to provide a coupon code for at least a period of time uh, for, for their product if you want to try it yourself. But let's make this little cross grain box with the lid made with an infinite axis chuck for my wife for Valentine's Day. I'm starting with the base. This is cross grain kiln dried maple. I'm pressing the wood against my closed chuck with live center pressure. For now, I only want to round this off. Most importantly, cut a tenon for a proper chuck mount. I'm using my large bull gouge. By the way, I'm not using dividers anymore to mark a diameter on the wood. I've had too many close calls. Instead, I'm measuring with calipers, making a mark, rotating the mark around the wood, checking to see how close it is. This is much safer, for me at least. I nearly always finish off my tenons with my skew. Then I can reverse the wood into the chuck for a reliable hold. For now, I only want to true up the diameter to be close to my ultimate objective. I'll revise it later. I lost some video where I mounted a piece of frogwood to a work platform and rounded it into a dome, then sanded up through all the grits. When using the infinite axis chuck, I always sand completely since I may never be able to sand that part again. So now, the frog wood is sanded to 400 grit. I'm cutting a shallow tenon that will blend into the design. I'll use it later to finish the bottom side. Now for the fun part using the infinite axis chuck. This is a plumbing fitting with a ball joint and a work platform. It is not only alpha axis, it produces skew axes, turning axes that are not parallel. I use the live center to point to where the feature will be cut. My spindle gouge is freshly sharpened. I am careful to stay on my side of the tool rest. When the lathe is on, I watch for ghosts. They are my friends and are my only guide while the lathe is on. Skew feature number two. One note here, I only sand into my cut with the lathe running. That is the only place that has a stable surface. I can touch up with the lathe off. That is why I sand the background completely before turning skew features.
Skew feature number three. This one, I apparently did not get the chuck tight enough. It slipped. I have to reposition, retighten, and cut it a little deeper. Skew feature number four is smaller. No extra event here. It goes quickly. Skew feature number five. This one intersects a couple of previous skew features. That will be enough for this lid. Then part off the frog wood from the work platform. I cut away too much of that tenon on the top surface. It will not hold. So I'm creating an experimental jam chuck. I'm using MDF and cutting a tenon on one side. After reversing the MDF, I'm cutting a recess to fit the lid into. The difference from a typical jam chuck is that after fitting the lid to the MDF, I'm cutting the MDF into quarters. A rubber band tries to hold them together while I put the lid into the jam chuck into the chuck jaws. Now that I can dress the bottom side, I can finish it. This includes cutting a hollow that the base will fit into and a center hollow to lighten the lid. The, the lid does not fit that well into the chuck. I'm really nervous that it will stay in. So I'm keeping the live center pressure in place until the bitter end. Only then can I back off the live center and take out the center nub and sand it. I should have also applied finish, but did not then. Now that the lid is finished, I can return to the bottom portion of the box. I need to reduce the diameter to be slightly less than the lid. Then, fit the top edge to the recess in the lid. Now to hollow the box portion. I'm doing most of the hollowing with my bowl gouge. With most of the wood gone, I switch to a box scraper to straighten the sides and bottom. 
Then sand the interior and apply an odorless wax finish. Next, finish the bottom of the box. I've reversed the box onto the jaws with expansion pressure. The live center maintains pressure for safety, but a rubber stopper prevents damage to the bottom. But I stop to measure to ensure I do not blow through the bottom. With the box sanded, I'm cutting a couple of grooves on the bottom for decoration. After signing, I'm applying shellac friction polish to the box exterior and the top and bottom of the lid, something I should have done earlier. Finally, to buff out the finish. I like this setup with the extender to which I can mount my buffs. First, Tripoli, followed by White Diamond, and ultimately, Carnuba Wax. Whew! Just in time for Valentine's Day. I trust my wife will enjoy it. It was a great opportunity to try the laminated frogwood with the infinite axis chuck. The base is typical cross grain. Since it is cross grain, I've kept the lid fit loose. The frogwood nicely highlights the skew features on the lid. This box is unique. It can never be replicated exactly. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends, and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. There are now 8 years worth and over 400 videos to choose from on my website. But always please wear your face shield anytime the lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. <laughs>